You know, Harry, hummingbirds off the deep end every week. We got to talk about some really cool stuff here at the Jägermeister Workbench. Tarpon, definitely a fish that I love to talk about. So tell me some of the things you like to do when catching tarpon. All right. It, obviously, everything depends on the area that you're fishing. I fish a lot around Key Biscayne and in the south area, and I love covering territory. I'm a, as as you can see, always see, I'm a good Rapala fan. Mm -hmm. uh, this is something I'll troll. I use light leader. I'm going to use probably no no more than 50 pound fluorocarbon. Mm -hmm. I think I get a lot more bites. Uh, if they're going to wear through it, they're going to you know, normally they cut it with the gill plates. That's how they that they get off most of the time. But I love covering territory. I'll put a couple of these, if not three out. And I'll be one short, two long, and I'll just I'll go all around the, the Rickenbacker Causeway, Key Biscayne, and just try all these different areas where these tarpon will hang out and it's it's the size of a mullet. People think, well, that's too big to troll. That's an 18 mag. That they eat a mullet. Like yeah. they'll inhale a mullet. You've no seen doubt. that a thousand times. Uh -huh. And when I'm struggling, you you're, you're, say you're drifting with crabs or whatever. Nothing like taking a little small chugging type lure, casting that Walk out, the dog. and just have that thing like a shrimp will be popping across the water a little bit or a struggling mullet, and just pop that thing real slow. Stop, pop it, and these things just get. I mean, the bite on lures and plugs are just phenomenal. You lose a lot of fish, but the bite is incredible. Now, a lot of guys fishing live bait, Harry, so mm -hmm. let's talk a little bit about well, that this, rig. This one here, this was a cool little rig. A uh, little buddy of mine, Bouncer Smith, uh, uses this rig. What it is, take that rubber band and slide it up. Now you can slide it right up there, and it'll go all the way. Keep going. Let's see until where my double line is. It'll stop there. So whatever nice. length of leader that you want to use is always going to be here. So you have a fish on, right? And right. then you crank it. You can just go right past your leader and wind the float. You don't have to take the float off or anything, and it slides right down to the nose of the fish or wherever you want. So you it's know a what? really I'm cool. Have to start using that. It's you guys something just I me just something. well, I'll tell you, it's something I just learned not that long ago either. And uh, it's what a great, great way of fishing without you know these floats have been around forever with the slice in them, pulling them out and putting your line in yeah, and all that, and then you then you. The leader comes up, and you got to pull the pin and pull it up. This, right. this technique right here that, that uh, Josh at the shop, you know, he fishes with Bouncer. He showed me this technique, and I was that like, is man, really this, is, cool. this is a pretty cool trick. And uh, the little bead on the top right. stops it at the double line. So as it, got as it. it at the top of your leader, it's going to stop and jam up. So it's right. not going to go. So if you want an 8-foot leader, that's what you have. If you want a 15-foot leader, depending on whatever bait you're using, a big crab or whatever, that's the length that you, that you have there. So it's really cool. All right, Harry. You know, a very popular method throughout the state. A lot of times you get tarpon to where these tarpon, they just don't want to bite. Whether no. it's in a residential canal no. and they get a lot of pressure. Live bait or dead baiting on the bottom. So if this just was a, a, mullet. a mullet, dead fresh mullet, we're going to cut it in chunks, guys. So we could cut this in a chunk. We could use the tail section. The guts would be inside here. And essentially, all you got to do is take your circle hook, throw it in there, and throw it out and lay it on the bottom. Now the most important thing, guys, about dead bait fishing is you gotta have some current. If you don't have current, what ends up happening is all you do is catch saltwater catfish, whether it's a sail cat or the bad cat. The point is when you have current, it's gonna take your smell down current. You wanna wanna anchor up. up current of where the fish are. Mm -hmm. If you're fishing a dock or if you're fishing in a creek mouth, anchor up where you see the fish rolling and put a chunk, chunk of dead bait on the bottom and yep. you can run a live bait across the top. Off the top. And what you got to really, with circle hooks, which is obviously my favorite, mm -hmm. you, you, like Rick shows you right here, don't hook it real deep. You want to hook it shallow, so this hook does what it's supposed to do. If you take this hook and just dive it in real deep, real, real hard, this fish is not going to, it's not going to do what a circle hook is supposed to do. Right, there's not so, enough exposed. So don't, don't hook it too deep when you're doing that because it's really important with a circle hook. And it's a deadly way of catching, you know, big tarpon. Thank definitely. you so much for that. That's I really cool, appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. definitely works. I'm going to use that.